Hi, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn. We're just cutting through the Salem Brooklyn Cemetery here in Sale today. We're on our way to Walton Park where we're going to check out the Sale Area Model Engineering Society and hopefully we'll get to check out some of the engines and see what's going on. They have an event on today and hopefully we'll get to see some of those engines up close. We're at the Sale Area Model Engineering Society with Stuart Clayton, the secretary. The treasurer. Treasurer, sorry, the treasurer. <laughs> yes, I just asked you that and I got it wrong <laughs> twice. <laughs> <laughs> so Stuart, tell us a little bit about your uh, organization. Okay, this is a model engineering club. So we're all a bit anoraki, but uh, we, many of us have built our own engines. Uh, the club was established here in this park in 1972 uh, and we run trains every Sunday for the public uh, and then we come down on a Wednesday for uh, maintenance or projects like building the canopy which is right behind me here covering our steaming bay uh, and uh, and that's our regular and, we, and that's 52 weeks a year so we don't stop for the winter um, and then several times a year we have a special event. Uh, the one we have today, for example, is what we call an open weekend, where we invite other model engineering clubs uh, to bring their engines. And uh, so we, we ran yesterday, uh, we had several visitors, and today we had four or five visitors, uh, which adds a bit of, it's a bit of an attraction for the children, because they get to know the engines and they get quite selective. Oh, <laughs> nice. The, so you uh, have other, other groups here as well? Uh, there's, we are just one club here, but today we've got visitors, other visitors. Yes. We've got other visitors, yes, yeah. we've got visitors. And here. you all run on the same gauge? Uh, no, we've got two gauges here. One is three and a half inch, so the smaller engines, and the other is five inch on the same track. Uh, and we have... Um, Steam as well as electric and actually one engine we've got is, is a petrol driven engine uh, which is a diesel profile but a petrol engine in it uh, and we can we can run five uh, trains on the track at any one time because we have a fully automated uh, signalling system just like uh, the real thing so that if a train is in one section the signal behind it is red. So in theory, you could never run into the back of a, of a train, uh, and that's fully automatic. So, if we had more than five trains on the track, we would all be sitting at a red light, <laughs> which, <laughs> which would not be good. Um, the track is 400, uh, 400 yards long, uh, and behind us here, we this is our steaming area. So under this canopy, which is where we steam up the engines and tinker with them and talk about them. Oh, well, Generally let's do model engineering things. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Let's take a look at some of your uh, your trains. Do you call them trains or engines? These, these or are engines. Or, or locos. Locos. Or locos. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, yes, the train, it becomes a train when you put carriages behind it. Right. Indeed. And that's <laughs> just like the real thing. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look. So here we have a, a model of, of a very famous locomotive, the Britannia, and uh, it looks like uh, the driver has, the owner has a bit of a problem. Have you got a problem, Steve? That's sad because this is a lovely locomotive when it's when it's running. I think I've been on this one. Have you? <laughs> I think okay. so. Yeah. So that's exactly what is exactly why we built this canopy here because it means no matter what the weather, we can at least work on our engines in the dry. Here we have an example of this is the, one of our club locos, or I should say most of the locos are owned by members of the club and they take them home with them. 
we have two or three engines here which are club locos and that over there is an example of one and that's called the peak diesel uh, we've got a petrol engine in it but uh, that's a very good workhorse for the club and that that locomotive would actually pull ten would pull ten, ten trucks it's absolutely amazing I, I, I the first time I saw this I was absolutely amazed that these little things could pull so much weight. Yes, they are amazing, absolutely. Here we have the signal box. So from here we control the uh, the traverser which we've just viewed and in that process it puts the signals to red just round the corner so a train doesn't come through while we're operating it. Oh yes, you can and see them changing. Yes, so as the trains go around up here we have the diagram of the circuit of the track. We are here. A train just coming through here, and he'll be just coming round the bend now in front of us. And there he is. Mm, there he is. Okay. And so the signal behind him is red. So if a train comes round here, he would stop there until this train has gone past the next signal, and then this one would go yellow. Well, that's fascinating. I thought it was a free for all. All right. <laughs> this no. is like the real deal. It really is. It really is. And especially in the summer when all the trees are in leaf and you can't see across the track. In the winter it's less necessary because you can see right across the track through the, through the trees. But in the summer you really cannot see around the bend. So you don't know if there's a train there. So we rely on the signals to keep us safe. to these very much but um, in a real life signal box of this period so going back to the 1940s or earlier would have this kind of equipment in it this stuff looks to be of that vintage yes and it, it, it is the real thing this is taken, the real thing taken from wow uh, an old signal box yeah that's amazing And these controls here are for the traverser, as I say, all, all pneumatic, so we use compressed air to operate the locks that lock the uh, traverser in place, the ram which moves the traverser in or out, and a, a signal and a sprag and opening the tunnels, the truck tunnels, and all, all done pneumatically. Here we have the telephone. When a driver wants to leave the track, just around the corner from us here, there is a, another telephone and he rings here to say, can we let him off? Brilliant. So this, this equipment was uh, decommissioned and you managed to get your hands on it somehow? Yes, someone did. Before my time here, but uh, back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, when this lot was all built. In fact, today we, one of our visitors, well, he is a member here, but he doesn't get, he doesn't live locally. We're privileged to have him here because he's the guy who did all the drawings and a lot of the design work for all the track, the signalling system, uh, and so on. If you pick up any of the drawings, it's got his, his name on it. So he's one of the founder members.
This is exactly how uh, locomotives looked in their day when they were working. They never bothered to clean them. You never saw shiny locomotives like the one behind, all lovely and pristine. These, these locomotives were truly workhorses and as long as they kept them going, they didn't bother cleaning them. But this loco here is an amazing workhorse. This is the smaller gauge. This is three, three and a half inches, as opposed to the one behind it, which is five inches. But this loco here will still pull two trucks, four uh, passengers, easily. She's a beauty. This is without the council coming here. How do you separate passengers getting off the train and passengers queuing for the train? So well, our, plat our platform is already, our station is already set up for that. And here we have a train arriving, passengers get off here, and there's no contact between them and the passengers waiting to get onto the train. Well, that's brilliant. Bit of serendipity. <laughs> so I got it. Yeah, yeah, it's LMS 4767. And your name is? Jason Pattinson. And, and, and who, why are you a famous person here in Seattle? I will say I'm famous. I will say I'm famous. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. Infamous? Infamous. Yeah, we'll go with inf infamous. <laughs> Jason's another YouTuber here in Seattle. And we'll put up a link to his channel. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Between, between the park here where we have our track, Right next to it is the Bridgewater Canal going from the centre of Manchester right the way south through the country. Uh, and then the other, immediately the other side of that is the main line between Altrium and Manchester, which is now the tram line. So the trams run on there, no trains. Uh, so it's very much a, a transport centre. It is. From five inch gauge to full size. Park built Britannia. Uh, some ways to go, but so this this model isn't complete. It isn't complete. No, not yet. So it's being worked it's, on. It's, I think it's mainly detail to go on yet, but okay. he's getting there. How many are running right now? We've got five on right now. Really? Yep. Wow. Yeah, yeah they're, they're a good bit apart, aren't they? Yeah. And it's just regular coal you're using? It's, it's called steam coal, uh, domestic coal um, that we used to use in our houses. Uh, it's, it's, too, it's too dirty. It creates a lot of smoke and a lot of uh, You mean uh, the household oily. version? The household version. It's dirtier. It's much dirtier and doesn't generate enough heat. Um, so the very best coal, what we call it in this country, we call it anthracite. I think steam, steam coal is something similar to our countryside, maybe a grade down. Well, that was great fun. I really enjoyed that. Thanks to the Sale Area Model Engineering Society for having us, and thanks again to Stuart Clayton for showing us around. They do this uh, every Sunday. They have rides, so go check it out. It's just a few P. It's in Sale. Walton Park, Greater Manchester. And don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our webpage, wickedacorn.com, where you'll find all kinds of Manchester things, maybe even trains. <laughs>